Welcome to the Compounding Center Connections, where we talk about different health conditions with our partnered practitioners. I'm your host, Jay Gill, the owner and a compounding pharmacist from the Compounding Center in Leesburg, Virginia, where we collaborate with practitioners, create custom medications to help our patients get better. In today's episode, we have Dr. Ava Coleman from Harmony Medica in Reston, Virginia. We're gonna take, we're gonna continue our discussion from the last episode. And today we're gonna to take a deeper dive into discussing thyroid related problems. So before we begin, Dr. Coleman, to our new listeners, could you please introduce yourself and your practice? Hello to everyone and thank you for attending this educational event. We are happy to share with Jay our experience. I am internal medicine doctor and functional anti-aging um, preventative uh, medicine. I have been doing that for more than 10 years. Before that, I was practitioner, uh, primary care practitioner for more than 15 years. So we would like to share our experience about thyroid uh, problems, yes. <laughs> So, you know, in our, in our last episode, we talked a lot about hormones. And one of the hormones that we said we have to just focus only on is thyroid. So uh, I know you have some slides to share with us, and I will uh, let you begin. Yes. So thyroid. Thyroid uh, is a very important gland. It regulates metaboli metabolism in your body. We have... Uh, 100 uh, million trillion cells in our body and uh, all these cells they have receptors to thyroid hormones so thyroid uh, hormones works like thermostat uh, they regulate metabolism in all the cells so if there is like a low secretion of thyroid hormones we develop condition called hypothyroidism. And uh, when is too much release of thyroid hormones, we develop hyper, too much thyroid hormones and uh, we speed up metabolism in our body. So, but let me explain about a uh, hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis because um, thyroid gland is actually part of a bigger machinery. Uh, endocrine system is very complicated, is uh, interaction between many different uh, endocrine systems. And one hormone can influence uh, release and action of other hormones. So, but let's focus uh, on thyroid axis. In the brain, we have hypothalamus and pituitary <clears throat> hypothalamus is like master regulator, uh, release the releasing hormones and they affect release of thyroid stimul stimulating hormone from the pituitary, which is below the hypothalamus. Uh, pituitary is like master gland, it release a lot of hormones. And one of them is TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So thyrotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus uh, stimulates release of thyroid stimulating hormone from pituitary. And that stimulates secretion of thyroid hormones from thyroid gland. And uh, in thyroid gland, which uh, um, is, you know, uh, located uh, in uh, uh, on our um, uh, in our area on our neck below, just below the apple, uh, Adam's apple, um, release very important hormones, which are T4 and T3, thyroxine and triiodotyronine. Thyroxine. Um, actually uh, the, is the uh, majority of the hormone released from the thyroid gland is thyroxine. There is very little amount of T3, uh, which, which is actually the active form of the hormone. So basically from 
uh, hypothalamus, there is a releasing hormone affects your pituitary and a pituitary release thyroid stimulating hormone. And after that affects our thyroid gland. And from thyroid, we uh, release uh, mostly T4 thyroxine, which is not active form of the thyroid. It needs to be um, actually active, activated in the peripheral tissue, mostly in liver. Okay, and um, in the liver, uh, through the process of uh, the iodinase enzyme, is actually producing T3, which is the active form of the thyroid. Um, in the same process of producing T3, uh, produce also small amount of reverse T3, which is totally inactive form of the thyroid hormone. Uh, so it's good for nothing. Um, some part of that uh, reverse T3 uh, is uh, activated in the gut, in our intestine, to active form. So you see how important is our gastrointestinal uh, flora uh, in order to produce more active form of uh, thyroid. So that's basically how hypothalamic pituitary uh, thyroid axis works. Uh, after the hormones are released from the thyroid gland, they give back input to your hypothalamus and pituitary and uh, let, know, let them know that there is enough hormone. We don't need more production. So thyroid stimulating hormone decrease and uh, won't promote uh, further uh, secretion of the uh, hormones from thyroid uh, gland. So that's, that is called negative feedback. Um, so that's how uh, the pituitary thyroid axis works. Uh, we have um, different condition when um, actually the hormones are not released uh, enough and that's cause, uh, that is called uh, hypothyroidism. Hypo means low, not enough. And we, when we don't have enough thyroid hormones, what's happened? Our metabolism decreases in all the cells. So the function of um, our organs is uh, not as um, good as should be. So, and people develop symptoms related to that and mostly is um, uh, weight gain, low energy, fatigue, unusual weight gain, uh, difficulty losing weight. People are complaining that despite they are exercising, almost not eating anything, they cannot lose weight. Increase in menopausal symptoms, the very like uh, um, big uh, important uh, 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 symptoms is brain fog, confusion, difficulty concentrating. That's, that's very uh, common symptoms. Uh, other things, dry skin, hair loss, um, dry, brittle nails and hair, um, slow heart rate, uh, slow uh, menstrual ch changes, and uh, mood swings, irritability, kind of depression. Um, so everything slows down. Our gastrointestinal tract slows down, so we develop constipation and slow digestion and uh, weak muscles. The very uh, kind um, important signs are, for example, a loss of the outer part of eyebrow hair. That's very common. Other things, enlarged thyroid, um, uh, dry skin. Um, this, uh, these are signs we can see it. Okay, that's hypothyroidism, but that could be other condition um, actually, the most common cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto. And Hashimoto is actually autoimmune uh, disorder. Actually, immune system attacks thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies, and that brings down th thyroid hormone levels. 
many times in the beginning of the disease, uh, the hormones are actually they are high and as uh, um, the thyroid cells uh, are destructed, the hormone levels goes down and uh, people become hypothyroid. Uh, the other condition is when, when the hormones are uh, too much is a hyperthyroidism. Hyper, that means a lot more, too much. And um, people develop a symptoms of uh, different symptoms, which are uh, irritability, hyperactivity, anxiety, um, heat um, intolerance, and um, uh, they lose weight despite uh, they are not uh, doing any dietary changes. So even appetite increase, but they still losing weight. Um, uh, they develop uh, muscle shakes, tremors, uh, in more severe cases, the uh, cardiac arrhythmia, you know, uh, it can develop rapid irregular heartbeats. And um, the other signs are bulging uh, eyes and um, fine brittle hair and hair loss also with hyperthyroidism, um, and large thyroid and, and frequent bowel movements. Um, the condition, uh, the most common condition associated with hyperthyroidism is uh, Graves' disease and uh, is the most common condition associated with hyperthyroidism, but is a very actually rare condition. Less than 3% of the population is affected. So immune system is producing like um, thyroid uh, stimulating immunoglobulins, which acts the same as uh, thyroid uh, stimulating hormone and affects mostly women in their thirties and forties. And like I said, is not uh, as common condition as Hashimoto, for example. Um, there are also condition when um, the thyroid hormones start fluctuating um, and that's usually happens with autoimmune disorders. And um, what does it mean autoimmunity? Hypervigilant immune system uh, cannot distinguish between invaders and the body tissue. And um, the specific tissue being attacked determine the diagnosis. For example, if they attack uh, joints, you develop rheumatoid arthritis. If they attack myelin sheets, uh, you develop multiple sclerosis. If they attack uh, thyroid, you develop Hashimoto or Graves' disease. Um, autoimmunity is uh, usually genetic, uh, there is genetic predisposition, but uh, there are triggers for autoimmune disorders. And uh, one of the big trigger is for example, gluten. Also leaky gut, uh, increased gut permeability. Uh, other food sensitivities, people if they have a lot of allergy sensitivities. Also toxicities, heavy metal toxicities, uh, viral infection, um, Lyme disease and tick-borne disease, bacterial infection, parasites, chronic inflammation, chronic stress, also nutritional deficiencies and um, environmental toxins. Uh, they all are triggers for our autoimmune uh, problems. Um, Gluten is very important. We see, uh, especially in the last decade, uh, a lot of um, gluten related problems and there is gluten thyroid connection. Um, gluten is one of the primary triggers of thyroid uh, autoimmunity and is a protein, is a form of lectin that triggers um, um, mild to severe inflammatory problems and that's compromising digestion and uh, also disrupting uh, to some degree immune system. So uh, 
but there are cases that uh, people have a gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, actually more gluten sensitivity, and they don't have that many obvious symptoms. Um, so um, that's the other problem. Uh, gluten promotes uh, leaky gut and how that happens. Uh, damage the gut lining. There is a... Uh, um, uh, enzyme called zonulin and if that increase uh, increase the level of zonulin and what that cause it cause um, the tight ju junction between the cells are opening and that's uh, actually um, promotes the condition that uh, unwanted organisms and toxins and immunoglobulins are leaking to, into our bloodstream and people develop all the uh, unwanted symptoms. Um, other things, uh, why gluten and thyroid uh, is so connected? Because they are so similar. The gluten protein and thyroid are very similar. And, um, you know, uh, antibodies start uh, attacking also thyroid gland. Over 95% of uh, Hashimoto uh, with non-celiac uh, gluten sensitivity or celiac disease um, are developing um, Hashimoto and uh, other thyroid problems. So, wow. so if you have autoimmune disorder, you please, you never eat gluten. So that's the first uh, things I would advise to every patient. Well, thank you very much for taking us through the entire how and where it's made all the way to hypo and hyperthyroidism. Could you uh, now talk to us about um, how do you diagnose or what labs do you do um, at your practice uh, to confirm hypo or hyperthyroidism? Um, there are differences in like a uh, conventional medicine practice and um, similar practice uh, uh, to my practice, which I am doing more comprehensive functional internal medicine. So um, in conventional medicine, we usually check uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. As you know, thyroid stimulating hormone is pituitary hormone. Um, and thyroid hormones like T3 and T4, uh, the free form of that. And based on that, uh, we determine if there is hypothyroidism or not. Some uh, doctors would check also thyroid antibodies like um, TPO and uh, thyroglobulin antibodies. But uh, many of them, they don't because actually it doesn't change uh, the treatment um, uh, that much. Uh, and uh, they actually don't know what to do with that. So, um, but the proper way how we should uh, check the thyroid, uh, we should do at least six tests to evaluate thyroid function, which is TSH, 3T4, 3T3, reverse T3, TPO, and thyroglobulin antibodies, that must. In order to uh, have a full picture, we need also to evaluate um, whole body. So I do all the comprehensive metabolic pa panel, uh, uh, blood cells, I check some vitamins and minerals, we can affect the uh, thyroid production. I check iodine level and uh, I check for celiac disease and toxins and also sex hormones. So very important part of um, uh, evaluation is also to evaluate gastrointestinal health and look for dysbiosis because as you remember, um, about 20% of a reverse T3, that inactive form of the thyroid uh, can be converted to active form in our gut. So up to 20%. Um, so also you have to evaluate for other medical conditions and uh, 
medications what patients are taking because certain medication affects our central nervous system. And as we know from the um, hypothalamus pituitary uh, thyroid axis that this is important uh, for release of thyroid stimulating hormone. So certain medication can affect that too. So is um, whole body evaluation. Dr. Coleman, could you uh, clarify, are these um, saliva tests, blood tests, urine tests, uh, um, what are these tests? Well, these are tests I'm using like with regular laboratory and uh, just checking, you know, like I said, comprehensive metabolic panel, CBC, certain vitamins and and minerals, which are cofactor in production of the hormones. Um, but it's very important to check also cortisol level and adrenal function because many times uh, uh, too high or too low cortisol level for a long time affects the um, uh, affects the uh, activation of the from T4 to T3 from inactive to active form of thyroid. So there is a very important many times to check first adrenal function. And to check adrenal function is better to do um, saliva test because uh, for example, cortisol has diurnal variation of release. Uh, so one time uh, blood work won't tell us anything. Um, and you know, um, it's just better evaluation. Also urinary test, um, is even better because you can check all the additional hormones and their metabolites. You can check uh, sex hormones. And as uh, I mentioned in the beginning, there are many endocrine system and they interact. So the sex hormones, if you're going through the menopause, for example, perimenopause, and your hormones are in balance, or you have severe stress and your cortisol is high, that will affect thyroid production and thyroid conversion from the inactive to active form. Um, so uh, can you talk about, uh, or could you review uh, what inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3, or if it goes down and makes too much reverse T3? Can you talk about what are some of those things that uh, we need to be aware of. Okay, so let me maybe uh, um, uh, bring up the major problems we have with um, with the treatment and diagnosis thyroid, and uh, oh. I will explain further what you ask. So the problems what we have, and that's that's a lot happened. Uh, uh, many times, for example, patients are on uh, thyroid medication um, and many times they are on Synthroid or Levothyroxine, which is synthetic T4 only. So this is an uh, inactive form of the thyroid and your body has to metabolize in the liver to active form T3, as we were saying before. And... Um, you know, people are getting this uh, inactive T4 uh, medication and there is a lot of that in the blood. So negative feedback to pituitary is saying, oh, we have enough hormones. So uh, it decreases TSH production. So if you base your um, evaluation only on TSH and somebody cannot convert this T4 to T3, the inactive to active form, okay? That seems fine on the blood work, but the patient is hypothyroid and they don't feel good. So this is one thing. Um, other thing, uh, they are also hypothyroid condition with low TSH and that could be uh, tricky. And um, the most common is for example, severe stress and high cortisol level. What it does, uh, it affects your uh, thyrotropin uh, hormone from hypothalamus and that affects your TSH release. So TSH is low, but despite you have, you know, low levels of thyroid hormones actually, okay. 
and I see that frequently. And if I see the patient TSH, you know, the range of TSH is also very tricky because um, in regular laboratories like LabCorp and Quest for a long, long time, the range uh, for TSH was very wide. From 0.5 to 7.5 was for a long time. After that, the doctors noticed that this is too wide range, let's decrease, and they decrease to from 0.5 to 5, okay, which is still too high range. Now, uh, they decided that maybe to 3.5 is a better range. But from, from evidence-based medicine, from uh, our um, experience, doctors noticed that the best uh, uh, level is between one to two, actually. So when you see somebody with um, TSH uh, very low, below one, actually, and, um, and they have like symptoms of hypothyroid, that's probably could be uh, one of these condition and could be related to high stress, high cortisol level. There's other condition too. When we produce in the process of producing uh, the active form of the thyroid, yes, uh, T3, we produce this reverse T3, okay? And there are certain uh, conditions, they increase the production of this inactive form of reverse T3. And let me explain you um, on the other slide. Okay, you can see. Uh, so you produce uh, T3 and reverse T3 mostly in the liver and peripheral tissue. And they attach to the same receptor site in all the cells because they have the same structures. One is inactive only and one is active. So if you have too much reverse T3 and the ratio between reverse T3 and T3 is abnormal, um, you have uh, enough uh, T3 in the blood, but it cannot attach to the receptor site. So, uh, because there is a lot of reverse T3 already attached to it. So you still have hypothyroid condition. So you go to the doctor, they check thyroid stimulating hormone, they check um, T3 and, you know, free T3 and free T4, and everything looks within norm, but people are still not feeling good and they are hypothyroid because they are not uh, checking reverse T3 and ratio between. Um, and there are factors which increase the production of this reverse inactive, good for nothing thyroid, okay? Like I said before, stress, high cortisol level, yo-yo dieting, selenium deficiency, uh, long uh, standing high or low cortisol, which I mentioned before, chronic infections, so for example, Lyme disease, inflammation, chronic inflammation. Um, so many conditions which are causing chronic inflammation. So usually when people are sick for a longer time, their thyroid is hyperfunctioning just because of that. And advanced age. So as we are getting older, we start producing more reverse T3. Got it. So, you know, I think let's get to uh, the treatment now because most people just want to know now, okay, what should I be taking? And, you know, this is very timely because we've just had a very uh, big nationwide recall of a thyroid medication and a lot of people have been affected. So please, um, so talk to us about how do you go about treating um, or what type of thyroid medication do you use? So we are using, as physician, we are using synthetic medications, um, which is purely T4 form, so inactive thyroid, like Synthroid and Levothyroxin. And um, they are also synthetic medication, which are purely T3, like Cytomel. 
Uh, but uh, we prefer to use natural thyroid, which are um, made from animal sources. These are desiccated, um, um, actually uh, uh, derived from pork, porcine thyroid gland. It contains both T4 and T3. Um, so we are using a natural, natural thyroid, um, westroid, uh, pure thyroid, and armor thyroid. There are three major, you know, a na natural thyroid formulation, and there are some differences between them. Um, the first, um, the most pure, I think, medication is um, Westroid Pure Thyroid. Is gluten and corn and lactose free, doesn't have any artificial colors. And so um, that's, I think, is uh, better. Nature Thyroid is also gluten and corn free and no artificial colors, but contains many other uh, ingredients and uh, I think lactose. Armor Thyroid is very popular, but has more, um, contains cornstarch and um, other ingredients and uh, for example, polyethylene glycol. Um, other things with natural, uh, hormones, uh, they are, we actually don't know exactly um, how much T3 and T4 it is there, but maybe UJ, you can explain us better the differences between. Sure, sure. So, um, so as a pharmacist, I, you know, I have to clarify a couple of things. When we use the term synthetic, uh, basically your synthroid, your levothyroxines, or even what you may call as, uh, you know, as cytomel. There are synthetic, but they are bioidentical. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key word that we need to know. Uh, it is, a, when I say bio, uh, synthroid or levothyroxine, it is just a mirror image of what your body makes, okay? So not necessarily is synthetic a bad word here. It, the, the correct term should be bioidentical. Now, you know, you have, uh, uh, porcine derived uh, thyroids, and sometimes we refer to it as nature or natural. And in actuality, I mean, you know, it's it's not natural to our human bodies. It's derived from an animal product. But people have referred to it as, you know, even when the brand name is called Nature Throid, but they refer to it as that. But, you know, being a pharmacist, I'm a little bit more uh, technical about these terms. But now, uh, we basically at the compounding center compound with levothyroxine T4 or lyothyronine or cytomel, which is T3, and we make them either separately or combined. Um, and uh, some of these other desiccated thyroid or porcine uh, derived thyroid medications, they come already with T3, T4 combined. The ratio is an armor thyroid or, na or nature thyroid. The ratio of T4 to T3 is about four to one, just rounded numbers. Our human body is more, makes it at 3.3 to one. So uh, many people do well with armor thyroid or nature thyroid, or with let's just call it desiccated thyroid because you know, they're not metabolizing the T4 to T3 well. So they do very well with that, um, you know, with the armor and the nature products. Um, and when it comes to compounding, you know, we, we can make both porcine derived thyroid medications, and we can also make them using the bioidentical or synthetic T3, T4 combinations. The beauty of compounding is, you know, you have the flexibility as a practitioner, depending on the patient to say, you know, when I want, if you want it separate, combined, yes. um, and slow release or immediate release. Yes. And I have been working with Jay and he is very good with that. And if people have some allergies and cannot take some 
um, uh, ingredients, he is always willing to, you know, adjust that. And um, I have uh, patients with um, complicated situations and uh, everyone is di different, you know, there are not two the same bodies. And uh, I love to uh, work with Jay and being able to um, make precisely what I like and uh, make the certain ratio of T3 and T4 we think will work for the patient better. So, but summarizing what you said, uh, basically um, natural uh, hormones are uh, from nature, but they are not bioidentical. They are not the same as our uh, uh, hormones what we produce uh, because they are made from pork from the thyroid gland of pork. Uh, so they have a different structure. Other things, if you take a desiccated, uh, uh, you know, porcine thyroid gland, you have everything. You have a T3, T4, T1, T2. Um, you can have uh, calcitonin, which is another hormone produced by thyroid. And uh, that could be good, that could be bad. Uh, you take to the laboratory and try to standardize that, but still uh, you don't know what other ingredients are. So there are some people which actually benefit uh, from that. And I noticed people who had thyroidectomy. So uh, they had removed thyroid gland because they had nodule or cancer. Um, and they, um, they actually feel better on, for example, armor thyroid or nitro thyroid, probably because of all these other ingredients they are there. Yeah. Uh, but um, when you have autoimmune disorder, Hashimoto, actually the natural, you know, animal related product could make worse uh, autoimmune disorder. So you have to really evaluate your patients uh, carefully and uh, see uh, what would be the best approach for it. Many times, you know, uh, is also balancing other hormones. You don't even have to go to the hormone replacement or replacing zinc or selenium or other iron. Um, and uh, balancing other hormones brings to the normal level thyroid. Other things, if somebody has a leaky gut syndrome for any other reasons, that needs to be fixed because up to 20% of your uh, active thyroid can be produced there. So, uh, so, you know, one of the things, uh, Dr. Coleman, I just want to clarify, uh, at the compounding center, we always start out with whatever we make that is free of our major allergens that we know of. I know I work with you so long that we want to stay away from corn, gluten, dairy, you mm -hmm. name it, everything. So all, even our excipients that we use in our capsules and tablets are free of all the uh, common allergens. And uh, best thing to do whenever, uh, please call up your compounding pharmacist and ask what are the excipients in your capsules, mm -hmm. thyroid capsules. Yes. So now, Dr. Coma, we, in the essence of time, we got to wrap this up here. Okay. Um, I mean, a lot of good information, and I'm sure we will make these slides available to everybody uh, in mm -hmm. the description of the webinar. But if you could please share with uh, our listeners and viewers, uh, how would they, or how and where can someone reach you? Yes, I, uh, I'm working uh, in Reston, Virginia. I have office, I see patients there. Uh, but uh, I do also telemedicine, especially now in this difficult time. So you can reach me, um, you go to my website, uh, www.drevacolman.com and uh, uh, there is information how you can make appointment or 
I also do 15 minutes for free consultation appointment. So you can schedule that online and we can have video uh, consultation. And that helps uh, people to understand how I'm working. So I have a small practice. Uh, I have very good uh, close connections with the patient and we work on their health, whatever it takes. And uh, I use, you know, regular medication and I use compounded medication and I use uh, natural things, whatever it takes, okay? And whatever um, evidence-based medicine is supporting the treatment. Uh, uh, so thank you for <laughs> uh, well, letting me to um, talk about it, thyroid. Uh, it's been a pleasure, to, uh, Dr. Coleman. Um, and uh, I look forward to doing more of these episodes with you. Um, I, to everybody, I'm Jay Gill. Uh, I can be reached at j at compoundingcenter.com for any questions or comments you have. Mm -hmm. And I also want to make sure this information that we have provided is just for informational purposes only. It's not for diagnosis or treatment purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah, can I um, add something? Yes. yes. If you have any question, if you know somebody is maybe somebody close is suffering, has the symptoms and uh, uh, you have been on medication, but you don't feel good, uh, I'm happy to uh, be able to answer the question. So you can reach me uh, through my website and I will be able to um, uh, answer your questions. And looking forward for the next episode, I think we are trying to do adrenal uh, problems yeah. next time. Yes, and uh, yep. chronic fatigue. Yeah. All right, everyone. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.